Hello students, Kim Shepard again with video 9F, chugging along with regression. Um, the main idea with this video is we're going to use our linear regression equation to make predictions. Um, so one of the main reasons we create a linear equation is so we can summarize the relationship between the two variables and make predictions. So back to the direct loan um, example, um, our regression line said that we predict the loan value um, to be 2,366 times the number of loans minus around 474,000. Let's suppose that last quarter at the University of Delaware, 4,222 loans were issued. What would our equation predict the total loan value to be? And again, I'm going to add that hat just to reiterate that that's a predicted value. Okay, so we're going to use our regression equation and predict. We know how many loans um, Delaware issued. Let's predict the, the loan value of those. So all we're going to do here, 4,222 is the number of loans. We're going to plug that in for number of loans. We're going to put 4,222 right there and see what the model predicts, our regression equation predicts for loan value. type that in your calculator, we get that the model, the regression equation, predicts a loan value for University of Delaware of $9,514,294. Now that's just what the um, regression equation is predicting. Is that actually the value of those loans from University of Delaware? I, d I don't know. Um, but probably not, and so again, you could look at that difference and how far off our regression equation is from what was actually observed at Delaware would be the residual value there. Um, but we can use our, our regression equation now for prediction. So here we did it for one school. Let's do this again. How about Cecil? Um, let's predict the loan value for Cecil. So how much loan value might we expect Cecil College to grant during the next quarter if they um, grant 178 loans? I could almost have cheated if I didn't erase that. Um, and so we're going to do the same thing. Take your regression equation. This time we're going to predict the loan value for a school that issued 178 loans. Plug that in the calculator. All right, wait a minute. Hmm, that's a negative. If you type that in your calculator, double check, you actually get a negative value. So, does that make a whole lot of sense here? Um, the regression equation is predicting that for a school that issues 178 loans, the loan value is a negative number. So, you know, that's what's going on here. Your regression equation is not perfect. Here's an example of where it's not perfect. Um, clearly, the loan value for Cecil College was positive. Um, it was not a, a negative value. Um, and so part of the problem with this one um, that we might find is, we did have some really small schools like Cecil lumped in with some really big schools um, like West Virginia. Let me move on to the next slide. I'm not getting ahead of what I should say. So Cecil's predicted to have a negative loan value. Looking at our data, you could actually see the actual value was um, loan value was 295,000 very far from the negative 53,000 predicted by the equation. Um, so some problems with that direct loans equation is that the smaller schools got lumped in with the bigger schools. Um, and so perhaps that makes the sort of predictive power of our equation here not so great for some of those smaller schools. So 
What if we improve our analysis, make it more realistic? One suggestion could be, let's run two separate regressions, one for the larger schools and one for the smaller um, community colleges. Um, so we've made the mistake of lumping all of our data together when inherently it's coming from different groups. Um, sometimes you'll see that if you lump data together for males and females on a particular characteristic, um, perhaps you'd be better off to pick a certain model for just the females in your data set and a model for the males. Not always, um, but sometimes if your data come from different groups, it's good to um, separate those. So let's try this, see what happens. Okay, so in your notes, you have two scatter plots there and two new regression lines. This is the first one. If we split the colleges into to two groups, we're going to call them small schools and large schools. Here's the small schools, and here's our new regression equation. Now the predicted loan value is 1,616 times number of loans plus almost 44,000. Um, and we see here's the regression line with those schools. The smaller schools here, um, you know, they look like they range from that, the smallest school is like 128 loans up to just over 1,000 loans, maybe 1,200-ish loans. Um, so those are the smaller schools. If you look at the second scatter plot and regression line, these are the large schools. And here we see the loan value is 2,419 times the number of schools minus 802,000. I'm sorry, 802, uh, yeah, thousand something. Um, and here's the regression line for those. And you see that the large schools, they pick up sort of where the small schools left off and go all the way up to schools that issued over um, 12,000 loans. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting with this, you could kind of interpret the slopes for your two equations. I go back and forth here. As the average number, as uh, the number of loans increases for the small schools, see the impact on the, on the uh, loan value. And then what happens at the big schools on the loan value? So that's kind of interesting. You might have a conversation about that in class. Okay, so um, Cecil College was a small school. When we had the model where all the schools were lumped together, we weren't we're real thrilled with the um, predicted value we got for loan value. So let's look at our new regression equation for just the small schools. And what if we put Cecil College in here, who um, issued 178 loans. Let's see what this new regression equation would predict. I didn't do this. You're going to have to fill this in in your notes, or I might get some help. Let me write down the work. I've got help coming to the rescue. We're going to plug in 178 loans for Cecil. All right, this one's got it. Thank you. It's a simple put it in your calculator, but I can't do that in my head. Um, this time, this regression equation predicts a loan value of 331446 much closer to the like $295,000 that um, was the actual value from the data set. So much better here. Okay, so one last thing with regards to prediction um, that you want to be aware of. We only want to make predictions within the scope of data that we have. And so there's something called extrapolation. Extrapolation is when you use your regression equation and you predict outside the x values um, that are actually in the data that your model was um, built on. So extrapolation is risky, um, generally not a good idea. For the small schools regression equation, it's okay to predict number of loans for schools that ranged from issuing about 100 loans to somewhere around like 1,100, 1,200. You know, you want to see what the scope of that model was. Um, you wouldn't want to use the small schools regression equation to predict the loan value for a school that issued 5,000 loans. That's outside the scope um, of that um, data that the regression equation was based on. For the larger school model, it would be okay to predict um, any number of loans um, for schools that issued somewhere around 1,200 to 
13,000 loans outside those bounds, again, that would be extrapolating. So if you're ever asked to predict the number of loans, I'll go back. This was the model for the large schools. If it said use this model for the large schools and predict the loan value for a school that issued 20,000 loans, take a look at your scatter plot. 20,000, wait a minute, that's way over here. That's not in the range of data that we have. The reason why you don't want to do that, we're not sure that this regression equation is going to continue with a straight pattern, a linear pattern. It could be that for larger schools, you know, this sort of starts to taper off here. Um, so you want to avoid extrapolation when you go to make prediction. Just check your scatter plot. Hey, is that X value within the scope of the model, within the range of X values um, that were in your data set? And if it is, go ahead and make the prediction. If not, write a sentence that, hey, this is kind of dangerous, this is extrapolation. And I believe that's it for this video. Thanks.